dog, I love fighting this monster. And damn it, do I love great sword. And you know what? I love fighting this monster with great sword. Hello, my fellow hunters! How are you enjoying your time against our new primordial friend? Painful, fun, or painfully fun? Whichever way around it is, there's no doubt he is an absolute masterpiece of an ending for Sunbreak. And of course, with him comes one final new armor set, one final set of new weapons, and indeed... One final new best build for Greatsword. But has it actually changed much from the title update 5 version? The primordial pieces are good, but they're not exactly insane. And I will tell you this right now, the weapon is just... It's just bad for us. It's an element weapon, so no build-up boost. The roar is too low. We don't need the extra healing. It looks gorgeous. It's a shame, but it's nothing. So, Blood Awakening then, the new armor skill. I did an entire little testing video of this, but the TLDR here, if you do enough damage that you would heal for at least 150 health with your attack, even if you're at full health when you do it, you will gain 40 raw for 30 seconds, which is a massive, ludicrously large amount. That makes this skill very appealing, but that does also mean you need good uptime on it. Now, Greatsword, out of all weapons, is uniquely pretty suited to that. We like to snipe broken heads with strong arm counters, and we always do enough damage to instantly get the biggest boost and maintain it. But all of that doesn't help if getting Blood Awakening and Blood Right makes our build overall weaker, even with the Blood Awakening damage, because we have to swap so many pieces to do so, versus the efficiency that is the Title Update 5 build. Well, this is the Title Update 5 build. And essentially, thanks to the bonus update, we have three choices we can make. All of them will add to this build, giving it more skills than it had before. We don't need to change or lose anything that's here. We can just gain power, which is always the best thing to do with power is gain it. It's sounding much cooler in my head. Option one, add five agitator. <laughs> Yeah, it's not really exciting. It's not a huge damage increase. It's fine. It's kind of that leftover skill people throw in when they just need something that generically makes them hit monsters a bit better. But it's kind of, eh, especially in Sunbreak with Afflicted and how they interact with Enrage uptime. Option two. Add a playstyle defining skill, like Dereliction, so you have to deal with constantly being drained. Or add Bloodlust and have to deal with the Frenzy. You know, a skill that does give you more damage, but makes you work for it. Which I don't think are great to recommend in best standard builds like this is as I don't think it's a fair, truly best build, because otherwise we would just be saying, play on 5% health with heroics. That's the kind of extreme side of that. Option three then is add three blood right, so we heal for 30% of our damage, which is huge as greatsword. It was already quite a good skill to add to greatsword sets, as it gave you much higher uptime, because instead of drinking potions, you could just hit the monster and fully heal anyway, which obviously equals much more DPS over the course of a hunt, with all the time you've saved not hitting the monster. That's really nice. And three blood awakening. So, of course, we're going to go with option three. Not only because it's most fun, not only because it gives you unimaginable amounts of comfort with the healing that will be pouring in, but because it also results in the most powerful greatsword build, and it dwarfs the strength of the title update 5 one, thanks to just how good Blood Awakening can be in the right hands. And I feel fine recommending a Blood Awakening build because you don't have to play any differently or it's not dangerous, it's just all potential gain. 
With that out the way then, how does it all shape up? Firstly, weaponry. We're now using the Lucent Nagakuga Greatsword. It comes out to be about 1% stronger than the scorned Magnamalo Greatsword, and, well, that kind of makes it worth using because it's easy enough to swap over. Also, the four slot in it is very, very valuable. Set it up like this, extra size rampage slot, the rest attack, and we have a beautiful 395 raw Greatsword sword with more purple than we could ever want or need. Then we move to the talisman. And just like last time, there's no easy way to say this, so I'll rip the band-aid off. You need to get either a three build-up boost talisman or a three frostcraft talisman. One of the two. You can't target either, so just meld and meld and meld and meld. Build-up boost isn't that hard to get, at least I found, which is why I've got one. And then whichever you don't get, so in my case I got build-up boost, you curious craft the other one. So I have put three frostcraft onto the armor. So what is the armor? Well, <laughs> this was an incredibly hard bit of theory crafting, guys, and believe me, I'm as surprised as you will be, but, uh... Genius, genius, genius! It's just full primordial! See, as it turns out, because it has such an overwhelming amount of slots, and we want Three Blood Awakening, well, that already forces three pieces. We want three blood rights, so the helmet becomes very efficient. And then the waste still gives us the most bang for our buck when we think about the decorations it enables us to put in. So it really is kind of, I suppose, almost a Fatalis Satalkar situation, but not quite as extreme. In any case, this wouldn't be what we'd be doing if we were playing like Dereliction or Bloodlust or something with technically a higher potential, although only about a 3% higher potential at the cost of having a worse and harder play experience. That all said then, as I mentioned, whichever skill you don't have on your talisman needs to be curious crafted onto the armor, along with one rank of coalescence to play with the Hellfire Cloak, or at least one roll of a skill that will let you slot in one rank of coalescence. I got Wirebug Whisperer here on the helmet, which means I don't need to slot in one rank of Wirebug Whisperer, so I can instead slot in one rank of coalescence, so that did the job. Past that, with your other four pieces then, you need to get either three three build-up boost or three frostcraft depending on your talisman. You can swap the burst on the chest for a frostcraft, you can swap the burst on the gloves for a frostcraft, and you can swap the part breaker on the legs for a frostcraft. This still leaves us with one burst, which is actually really nice because it does help Greatsword. The little hit at the start of True Charge triggers the plus five raw from one rank of burst, which then powers up the big hit from the True Charge counter. So that's definitely worked out quite well. The last piece, you can just do what you want with. It's hard to get anything good without losing something you need, but, you know, good luck. I just got a random intrepid heart. So if we decorate this all up then, well, we end up with something that looks like this. And yeah, yeah, it's... It's not bad, is it? Seven attack boost, seven critical eye, four hellfire cloak, which is really so good for us. The guaranteed down that it gives us is a guaranteed strong arm counter on a head of a flailing monster, which is a huge intangible damage increase along with the regular pops of hellfire uh, that add up and it triggers coalescence, which at one rank is a super efficient damage boost. Crit boost three, weakness exploit three, offensive guard of course, stun resist because it's mandatory, otherwise you'll sometimes get stunned when you strong arm counter. I finished speed sharpening because it's in my talisman, you will likely have something different. Blood right, so we're healing for 30% of our damage. And let me just kind of really stress, really highlight how good for offensive gameplay this is, even ignoring Blood Awakening. I don't know if you noticed in the very start of this video, the little crazy sequence against Primordial I wanted to highlight, but thanks to Intrepid Heart and Blood Right, when he sweeps me with his tail here, I actually just instantly heal to full health, which then means I can continue on and carry on fighting and not have to bail or heal or panic. And that is really felt 
throughout your hunts, and it's both hugely a comfort and hugely a increase to your overall kill speeds because you just spend more time killing speedily. Then we have Bundled Up Boost for that sweet 1 and 3 chance to do 20% more damage, Frostcraft for that sweet 30% more damage on our counters, Blood Awakening for pops of plus 40 raw that you will start to trigger more and more as you wear down the monster and break more parts, so this just gets exponentially better towards the end of the hunt. Then we have a few leftover random skills from Curious Crafting, the one required Wirebug Whisperer so we can strong arm as much as possible, the one Coalition lessons to keep rolling thanks to Hellfire Cloak, the one burst which is still nice, and then a random Intrepid Heart I've got which does come in clutch sometimes as we just saw. That all said then, this is the exact uh, decoration setup that I've gone for. The Coalescence would be a Wirebug Whisperer if you had the reverse happen on your Curious Crafting, but other than that it's all fairly simple and straightforward stuff. So yeah, essentially you have the same best Great Sword Builders title update 5 with a Matsu, the same playstyle, the same Hellfire Infusion on top of every single offensive skill we could ever want. And now on top of that, we have massive self-sustained healing from Bloodrite that gives us massive boosts of raw from Blood Awakening. And those combined just feel really, really good to play with. It is a damage increase, as we'll see when we go over the maths of the build. But just from a pure, you will notice how much better this is to hunt with. It's really excellent. It really, really is. So let's actually look at those hard numbers then. We have our 395 raw Nagakuga weapon, we add 10 for attack 7, 5 for burst 1 as it's always up for the strong arm counter, 20 for blood awakening, we assume 50% uptime over the hunt, which is about right, 10 from coalescence with about 80% uptime, that's about right, that is 440, times 1.1 for attack, 1.15 for OG, times 1.36 for 90% affinity with 3 crit boost, times 1.3 for our frostcraft, 1.3 39 for purple sharpness and 1.066 for build up boost one third of the time, equaling a grand total of 1458, which is 50 higher than the title update 5 build. So that feels really good, right? We've got a better set offensively, but gained three blood right, so not only can we be damaging the monster more often so we kill it quicker, we are much less in danger of any kind of mishaps or dying or, you know, any of that kind of awkward stuff. I think this really is amazing, and while you can push damage higher at the cost of making it much harder for yourself, i.e. with the dereliction, with the bloodlust alternatives, or if you play perfectly with an Amatsu Greatsword while having 100% uptime on Palico Attack Drum and don't miss any of uh, your strong arms and you have speedrunner-like ability, then technically that is a better way. But look, for us mortals, it really doesn't get much better than this when it comes to a combination of damage and just niceness to exist in. And as some break is over, as this is kind of it, I think existing nicely is something that we've all earned after a year of hard, beautiful hunting. So I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope uh, you have fun using it. And for now, like if you, well, have enjoyed this, subscribe for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good Bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye